Can you talk a little bit about reading? Because you said something earlier that was, you said there's so many bass players that are kind of missing a great opportunity if they don't we, read. Yeah. It, it's, and I you're a great reader. I, I mean, I mean it, it almost happened to me accidentally to, to get into you know, some of the, the film work. I was asked if I could read and I said yes. And you don't know what you're going to be confronted with when you first get into that. You know, you could, what, I guess what I was telling you earlier is you could be the mother of all mothers on base, unbelievable yeah. player, but if you can't read, that opportunity is out of your grasp. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it doesn't matter how many chops you have, and you have to know how to read. And I'll, I'll literally be handed cues as simple as you know, you know, they usually save these for last. You get the tough, <laughs> tougher ones done, but it might just be something like two, three, four, and that's the cue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you have to know how to read that. And I know people who can slap the living hell out of the bass and play Jocko lines for days who can't do that. Can't read simple cues. Because yeah, they yeah. can't read. So the investment, it's like a, anything. You, you, you want to, if you're a musician, I call myself a lifer. Like I'll play a dirty, ratty club or I'll play the Bentley of arenas. I'm, I'm a lifer. I'll do it forever. It doesn't matter. You know, I just love music. Yeah, and yeah. That's a skill. It's a language. That is the language of music. We, the accessibility you have as soon as you, you know, know how to read, you're like, okay, this book, this book, everything you can manuscript paper for everything in the history of music. Yeah. So yeah. you have ac access to that. So you can just be inspired by this song. And if you want to learn how to read it. And did you, know, you get so into like it slowly? Or were you, were you, I, were you I sort of jumped about, into it. The, were you strategic I, about it? Did you think, I, was I really want to learn to read really well because i want these type of gigs well they rate you here's i guess you brought up a good point with that i at berkeley there are ratings they rate you on your levels of, okay if you know how can you read are you even able to play in this big band or this small band ensemble yeah if you don't know how to read you're not going to get in that ensemble you could be a great improviser but if you still can't read the head or the changes you know yeah yeah, yeah. so that kind of I, I wanted to really step up my reading to get into the more advanced ensembles and play with players so you who were like-minded or who yeah, were on yeah. that level. Yeah. So that 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 was one of the impetuses. And did it come easy? Did, not easy. Did it come natural to you, or did you have to? It's grasp sort it? of. Uh, I don't want to sound arrogant. Them. It came so easy. Yeah. No. It. I mean, things came. Aspects of it. I, I think the Omni book. You. I would say it came not, it wasn't too difficult. I, yeah. I gravitated. I was inspired by it. So I think if you're into something, it comes easy. You're like ner nerdy you know? about it. Yeah, I was very nerdy about it. I was, that Omni book had all the, you know, all the flats and sharps written in. So it yeah. forced you to read accidentals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No matter what key you're in. And then you go to a book like The Samandal Method, where you're actually reading yeah, the circle yeah. of fourths yeah. and fifths and you're getting all the flats and sharps and going around the cycles. Yeah. So I think a combination of both those give will give you a very well-rounded reading ability. And then you just want to get your hands on as much material like that Dots Hour. Just start yeah, naming. Just shed as much as possible. Yeah, and, I'll look, and I look at stuff that's way beyond just like playing the bass notes. I'm not a great example of, you know, some flashy bass player, but, you know, like playing chords, yeah, understanding. Yeah, yeah. You know, I would play like if here's a, just a dominant chord, right? Yeah. What can you play over that to, you know, playing yeah, the E yeah. major over gives you that flat nine. Yeah, so yeah, understanding yeah, scale yeah. structure, once you, it all kind of correlates and works together. Once you understand the chords, the chord scales. Did, did, is that something you know, that... The keys and the flats yeah, and the sharps. Yeah, and you start, kind of that sort of like diatonic harmony, you know, is that yeah. something that you started really getting into when you went to Berkeley as well? More so. I was. I had a great bass teacher. His name was Steve Evans. Actually, Juan Aldretti informed me that he studied with him too. He said, you know, oh, we really? the same yeah. bass teacher, this guy Steve Evans from yeah. the Bay Area. And he's the most working bass player still. Well, and this was before you went to Berkeley. So this a, is before. You had a great yeah, teacher before you went. Yeah, my mom got me some went, lessons yeah. with him when I was in high school. And he would literally write out, you know, one, three, five, you know. And yeah. First of all, just to see... Just a major scale, yeah. starting here, and then doing. You know, we worked on the modes and just understanding diatonic harmony. And I didn't, almost didn't even know what I was doing. It was just like, okay, I'll practice this this week. Just you know? you so I, I was just wanting to learn roots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you know? yeah, yeah I was yeah, like learning yeah. Rush songs, learning, trying to learn Y Y Z or 
yeah, you know, yeah, limelight yeah. or yeah. you know stuff off of moving pictures. And then I dug back deeper. <laughs> yeah, you know, went back to twenty one twelve. And then that sort of so he was the guy that sort of like really introduced you to the the concept of using chord tones, and yeah. scales, and and and, and, yeah. and were you pretty well schooled at that when you got to Berkeley, or, or was it just I did you just I develop place, it more? I jumped. I think out of like the level one stuff yeah. into the level two, maybe level three and a couple things. I don't remember exactly, but I know I placed out of some of the very beginning stuff. And, you know, I, I'd never even really given much thought to like, oh, ear training? What's that? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, I was yeah. just learning the song. So, What do you think some... now when you play? Are you thinking chord tones? Do you No, think... I, just, I just try to let my ear dictate, you know, what. Yeah. When I practice, I practice a lot of improvising. I yeah. have I have some real basic techniques that I try to wor- try to work on. A, a teacher said to me something. I think it was Ed Tomasi, who's a fabulous sax player at Berkeley. I don't know if he's still teaching there, but he taught. I want to say it was like the the Felonious Monk Ensemble, and I, I remember Julian Coriel, Larry Coriel's yeah, son yeah, was yeah. in it. We played together, and he would say, you know, any note can work over any chord basically on um, in western music we have 12 notes so yeah. i'm like well how does a b flat work over a c major seven which is, has a b natural yeah and it's not like you're gonna sit on the note it's about approach tones yeah. so i learned a lot and it really is a trombone book that he recommended to me i don't know if you're familiar with this book and it would talk yeah, about scale tones from below i mean i mean, I mean chromatics from What's below and scale tones from above it was is written, it how crooks it might be. I think ready aim improvise. That it? No, no, no. It's not. That's Hal not Crook's it. How crooks the trombone? Yeah, he's the trombone. He's the trombone guy, isn't he? He yeah. might. It, I don't. I shouldn't know the the title. I don't. I'm. I'm a flight. It's a trombone book. <laughs> yeah. So it would be the next step. Like once you understand, here's yeah. your scale. Then yeah. here's your chord tones. He would say, okay, let's take a you know a chromatic from below each of the chord tones. Yeah. And we're just staying in one octave. You can go. Yeah, yeah. And I, I heard music in that. I'm like, oh, wow. Let's see. And yeah, you start, yeah, like, yeah, all yeah, I'm yeah. doing really is just aiming at the chord tones. Yeah, yeah. From a half step below, chromatic from below. And then the scale tone from above. Then what I would do is mix it up. In the book, they had exercises where you'd okay, skip, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you'd skip a scale tone or a chord tone yeah. so that kind of thing right? yeah, yeah, yeah you can keep if i move positions i can move it up and off yeah. same thing with the chromatic that kind of stuff yeah, yeah yeah just little exercises so you do that that's just over you know a c major triad yeah this would they would keep pushing you and it'd be like okay now we're gonna do it with we're gonna incorporate the major seven yeah now we're gonna do it you know up to the next scale which is D minor and and so on I mean, you can just take it forever you can work in every and do it all twelve cha- keys changes and, and yeah cycle force and just every like there's there's never a, well, one thing I learned is there's never a lack of stuff to work on like, <laughs> yeah I yeah, could just yeah, take yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, infinite yeah, yeah. the ideas yeah, yeah. that. Yeah. You can do it super slow. My a good friend of mine, his name's Gary Novak, and some of you probably know him. He's an amazing yeah. drummer. Crazy his drummer. dad, when we we lived together um, when I first moved to LA for several years, and he was playing with Chick Corea at the time, which was already like, mind blowing. John Patitucci, you know, was, yeah, yeah, was, yeah. Was, yeah. Was still a god, but was the god, the big time god. Yeah, unbelievable. You know that ability on upright, and so Gary's dad would come to visit us. And his dad would bang, I would have a gig late at night and his dad, you know, it's like in the sixties, he'd bang on the door and go, get up and play some changes. Let's do, you know, blues Serious, paralysis yeah. and all 12 keys. So I, I got really comfortable playing like, you know, just changes, just playing standards through, yeah. through some standards. And he would, you know, modulate every 12 bars up a half step. And I almost couldn't keep up. When he first had me doing that, I was like, oh my God, I can barely even play the one, four, and five here, yet alone <laughs> yeah, all the passing yeah, 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 stuff. Yeah. You know, my. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, and then he modulates up. And then he's yeah, up yeah, in yeah, B. Yeah. 